guys, Ron here, and over the last few generations, I've developed a huge appreciation for Pokemon characters, and specifically their designs. Sure, Pokemon are the reason I love this franchise, but the human characters have become more and more artistic to the point where I think about them every day. In this video, I'll go through each generation and region and count down my favorite character designs. This will be extremely biased, but I did get a ton of help from you guys on Twitter, and even got a lot of advice from my sister and other female friends so that we can agree that characters like Olivia and Karen are here for good reasons, and not just because they're hot. This list is purely based on how clever, successful, or unique these designs are. Personality and plot isn't a factor unless their designs did a good job conveying the character's story. I'm only gonna rank named characters, so grunts and entire trainer classes who share designs with each other aren't here. There are a lot of great designs I won't mention, but all of the ones in this video are at least an A- and above. Let's naturally begin with Kanto. It doesn't have the flashiest characters, but I narrowed them down to 8 admirable designs. Number 8. Leaf. They honestly did a very good job creating a female version of the most iconic protagonist. The colors are very soothing, and her overall fashion sense is appealing. Not a mind-blowing design, most Kanto characters have tame appearances, but honestly no flaw. Number 7. Chase. Imagine the task of creating another protagonist inspired by Red. They did a commendable job of updating the player character of Kanto into the modern era. These are clothes any kid would want to wear. It's very practical while also fitting into the long-established aesthetic of a Pokemon trainer. Number 6. Blue. Such a great counterpart to Red. His heart gold design has some excellent clothes. I would love to wear this, but I think his older Sun and Moon design is my personal favorite, and a better representation of Blue's character. He's finally wearing green, like his Japanese namesake, and everything about his getup gives an accurate representation of his demeanor. He's a more mature, laid-back, and cultured version of his arrogant self. Number 5. Elaine. An example of an extremely underrated protagonist design. She has all the best traits of later female trainer designs like a younger Hilda. And just like Chase, she's wearing modern and fashionable clothes a girl her age would wear. Her ponytail is sporty so you know she's going on a grand adventure, and you just want this character to succeed based on this design. Number 4. Koga, specifically from Let's Go. This is such a sleek and aerodynamic design for a shinobi. The colors are appropriate for a ninja, but unique enough to pop. I like how his scarf is now covering his face, his attire is purple to denote his poison typing, and his chainmail is more prominent. The design naturally matches his type without being superfluous. Definitely the coolest looking character in Kanto. Number 3. Red, the archetypal Pokemon protagonist design. It has everything a Pokemon player character needs, no more no less. The primary colors are balanced and his stance and expression are determined. Most male protagonists hope to get close to what this character design achieved. It embodies how every child would like to be perceived. It's not the most genius or revolutionary design, but one of the most successful. Obviously how iconic this character is has influenced his rank, but it's practically impossible to divorce that from my opinion in this case. Number 2. Sabrina, particularly from Let's Go. This is the most refined and in my opinion the ultimate design for Sabrina. The green complements the magenta, and the gold accents represent the psychic type like her badge does. Her corset, traditional Japanese hair, and rings illustrate her restraint. She's undoubtedly beautiful, and there was much thought put into her design. I'm a big fan of her heart gold version, but there's no doubt this one embodies her character more. Before I reveal the number one spot, here are some honorable mentions. Erica is alluring. Her Let's Go redesign is so pretty. Misty's Let's Go redesign, taking more inspiration from the anime, is my favorite version of this iconic character. And Jesse and James are underrated. How Jesse's silhouette looks like an R and James' overall handsomeness makes these two the best looking Team Rocket grunts. The female grunt from Usum is a contender though. And number one is... Lorelai specifically from Let's Go. You may not prefer the art style, but there is no doubt these games did an amazing job redesigning most characters. But when you take an already popular design and perfect it, you get an S-tier character design. Finally, she has ice crystal elements. Her cold and sadistic look is reminiscent of an icy siren. Her high fashion is very indicative of an Elite Four member, unlike her Gen 3 design, which makes her look like a hot librarian. The blue accents are so tasteful, and the layers to her clothes reveal an unnecessary amount of attention to detail. In order to make this design extremely successful, this is a boss. Time for Generation 2. Johto has the least amount of entries, not many outstanding designs, but the ones on my list deserve to be praised. Number 7. Price. Look at this man's drip. I would love to be wearing exactly what he's wearing at that age. His original design was extremely boring, and they turned him into a Chad with clothes that makes total sense for an Ice-type trainer. Number 6. Archer, specifically from Let's Go. He's a character introduced in the Johto region, but how he looks like in Let's Go is impressive. Yeah, he's handsome and charismatic, but his vest and gloves are so stylish. This is an unexpectedly polished design. Number 5. Lance. Some may put him on the top, and I get it. 
He has one of the most unique designs, sporting the iconic Dragon Master cape and knight-like suit. The colors are very complimentary and he's undoubtedly cool, but there's a tiny hint of goofiness that makes this design short from being 100% successful. His clothes don't fit him perfectly, but this is still a fantastic A-tier design. Number 4. Jasmine. The juxtaposition of this slender and delicate design with muted colors against the hardcore and scary steel types that back her up is what makes Jasmine's design so successful. She's clearly caring and put together. Her color palette is incredibly soothing as well. Number 3. Karen. This is, I mean, this, this is Karen. Look at her. Her hair is shiny and full with a blue hue that complements her yellow clothes, her piercing eyes and seductive gaze, the sharp crop top. I, I just love seeing creative outfits in Pokemon that would still work in the real world. She's not trying hard. What she's wearing speaks for itself without being flamboyant. Karen works it. Number 2. Morty. This is a cool looking guy. The scarf looks so fun and I never thought a guy could look this cool with a headband. His purple and black complements the yellow and white, and it reminds you of the cool chillness of ghost types, while still being approachable, tastefully spectral. There are two honorable mentions. Janine looks great, a kunoichi with an attitude, very cute and intimidating, but nothing too unique in the world of ninja designs. I'm sure a later gen redesign would have done her wonders. And Yuzin is unique and fun looking, but nothing genius. And number one is... Claire. Personality aside, this is peak classic Pokemon design. I love how she looks like a beautiful Dragonair in Pokemon form. Her heart gold and soul silver bodysuit with reptilian patterns works. The golden fang-like earrings and accents complement her gorgeous blue color scheme. She really looks like a powerful and majestic superheroine. One of the best figures in Pokemon to express how only humans with athletic builds like this can compete with and train dragons. A top tier design in my opinion. Even as a child, I thought she was beautiful. Hoenn really stepped it up and was aided by a lot of the redesigns in Oras. I could not narrow it down to just 10, so here are 14 of my favorites. Number 14. Annabelle from Sun and Moon. This is one of the best aged up designs in Pokemon. Her ponytail is so pretty and the bow matching the rest of the attire looks like an innocent touch on her serious work attire. The gloves look badass and the suit is chic. The contrast of her purple hair and monotone attire is intriguing. Definitely a design that makes you want to see more from Annabelle. Number 13. May from Ruby and Sapphire. I'm a fan of her Oras design and I obviously love the green from Emeralds, but classic May to me was the definitive look for a female trainer for multiple generations. Her athletic build and clothes are all appropriate for someone traveling through Hoenn's diverse environment. It's very iconic. Number 12. Lucy, probably the most interesting frontier brain. Her Seviper and aesthetic, red highlights and snake-like eyes make her seem like an anti-hero that could have been challenged throughout the plot of the game. A toxic femme fatale and the most interesting non-updated Gen 3 design. Number 11. Lycia. A perfect representation of a Japanese idol within the Pokemon world. Her relationship to Wallace is clear, her Altaria attributes are naturally implemented, the colors are fun, and she's effortlessly pretty. You can't help but smile when looking at her. Number 10. Winona. God, is this a vast improvement from her Gen 3 design. I love how cleverly placed all the feather accents are throughout her design. From her wrists and legs to her back and hair, these avian elements have been naturally incorporated. The pastel colors calm the spirit as if we're floating through the air, and she deserves praise for pulling off this unusual look. Number 9. Wally. Gen 3's Wally is just a guy, but in Oras, they took his plain clothes and used it to express his character development. The sterile and sickly white and grays for his apparel remind you of Wally's ailment, but his hair flares up and his cardigan unbuttons when he's finally confident during our faded battle at Victory Road. Such a lovable design. Number 8. Flannery. Her energy is fully expressed by her explosive hair. I love how instead of giving her a crop top with a flame pattern like her Gen 3 design, they were more creative and gave her a tube top under a tied shirt which together create an illusion of a flame pattern. It's very smart, and her bell bottoms totally match the look. Along with the belt that sports the logo of her town's onsen, they took an already hot character and gave her design depth. Number 7. Sydney. This guy's got drip! Such an appropriate look for a dark type trainer. He's dressed like he owns a nightclub and indulges in all of life's pleasures. The hair, the scowl, and the watch make him look like a punk in a high position. Number 6. Shelly. Admittedly, her original design could be preferred to some, but this Shelly is way better for me. Blue highlights in the hair are always a plus. Her skin and jewelry give her this vaguely Middle Eastern look that I highly appreciate, although she's probably Okinawan. The goggles, chain belt, and wetsuit all look extremely fine on her. It's a very fun and interesting character design. Number 5. Wallace. 
This is how you design a fabulous and flamboyant character without overdoing it. That shade of green is one of my favorites. Along with the purple and white, it's like this color scheme was made for me. The Milotic hair-shaped scarf and shorter cape complement the sailor hat so well that when I saw this design for the first time, it felt like something the real Wallace would actually wear. It feels more like Wallace than his original design. Number 4. Zinnia. Her asymmetrical haircut perfectly alludes to her sanity, the red accents really pop out against her grey and black, and that Rayquaza shaped mega anklet is the best mega stone accessory in the franchise. She looks like the protagonist of her own story, and that's an indication of a successful character design. Number 3. Drake. A design so perfect, they changed literally nothing about it in Oras. This captain looks like he has sailed to the corners of the earth to capture and tame the most ruthless dragons. This is one of the most intimidating looking characters in Pokemon, and he's just an old man. He commands respect with this look. Such a brutal yet balanced design. Number 2. Steven. One of the handsomest characters in the franchise. I want to be him. This rich air is cultured and lively, with magnificent hair, eyes, and suit. I love the metal cuffs and rings too. They perfected everything about his Gen 3 design. It's probably the best redesign in the franchise. Actually, it's the second best. But before getting to that, here are the honorable mentions. Nolan looks cool. It's an outdated look, but it's very appropriate for a factory head. Juan is underrated. Super suave and very complete for a nearly 20-year-old design. Spencer is a personal favorite of mine. His design is filled with Pokemon lore and mythology. We don't have many Sage-like characters, and I wish he was part of Emerald's main plot. The unknown tattoos are only surpassed by the impeccable Kyogre staff. Brawly had an amazing redesign. He went from some random guy to a clearly athletic man with pretty cool gear. The shoes are goofy, but they make sense. Glacia is infinitely better than her previous design. She was plain before, but now she looks beautiful. And Matt is probably the buffest Pokemon character, and his face paint looks pretty sick. A breathtaking man. I'm sure he'll be happy with the number one spot. Cause number one is... Archie. The best glow up in all of Pokemon. The man went from some punk who likes water, to this absolute chad fighting for the future he believes in. The beard is chiseled, the face paint honors his signature Sharpedo, his mega anchor necklace is on point, the net-like pirate jacket cape around his waist is marvelous. He's filled with details that all work so well. I feel sorry for anyone who played Omega Ruby instead of Alpha Sapphire, cause it's such a pleasure to gaze at this man anytime he's on screen. Such an entertaining design. Now Sinnoh designs are slightly less amazing, mostly because they didn't get the benefit of a redesign in their remakes. Number 10? Palmer. He definitely looks like a cool and strong opponent. Honestly, he gives me champion vibes, but it's not like there's an amazing theme going on here. Number 9. Dawn. Her original design is very iconic, unique, and stands out from other protagonist designs, but it makes no sense. Her platinum design is way more practical and honestly cooler, but it still makes no sense in a winter setting. If she was wearing leggings, she'd be higher up. Number 8. Faulkner. Kind of a better looking Palmer. His jacket is pretty neat, his hair is slightly more realistic, and it's pretty bold to have a character sit in almost all of his artwork. This Minato lookalike seems tough. Number 7. Fantina. She looks fabulous. I'm a big fan of the brilliant Driftlim inspired dress, and I've always been intrigued with how she's one of the few female trainers with a broad chin. Kinda emphasizes how she's European in an Asian setting. Number 6. Candice. In my opinion, the most balanced and least ridiculous Sinnoh gym leader design. Her colors are very pretty and announce her ice theme, her stiff and almost frozen looking pigtails are a nice touch, and I'm a big fan of how her sweater could be worn over her shirt or tied around her waist. It's natural and versatile. Number 5. Argenta. Another frontier brain most of you haven't met. Her fashionista and socialite look is definitely appropriate for a battle hall matron. She looks like she's been around the world and has scouted some of the world's greatest trainers. They did a good job of embodying the idea of an experienced and eccentric career woman in her 50s. Number 4. Cyrus. Pretty intimidating looking guy. His design is practically the main reason Team Galactic is popular. It surely isn't because of how the grunts look. The spacesuit aesthetic with the Galactic logo is far out, and his face instantly makes you intrigued by this guy's ambitions. Number 3. Dahlia. Definitely the best looking frontier brain in the game. She's kind of a transition between Gen 4 and 5 designs. She's got details like the frills and Battle Frontier logo on her waist that most Gen 4 characters lack. I'm always a fan of yellow and blue and some ethnic flair in a Pokemon design. She's a gorgeous character. Maybe one of the most underrated designs too. Number 2. Riley. This important looking person is just a guy you walk through a cave with. I'm surprised he wasn't an Elite Four member, or at least a hero who helps you stop Cyrus. This guy may just be a nice nod to Sir Aaron, but who knows which was designed first. His Lucario aesthetic and Groudon pattern necklace are both captivating. I want to see more of him. Honorable mention time. 
Platinum Lucas is definitely better than his original design. Cheryl Sugimori art isn't the best, she looks way prettier here, but I bet if she had a more modern redesign she'd be on the list. Lucian's design is nothing genius, but I love his cool look and Marley is a successful design, but she's literally wearing a stereotypical gothic Lolita outfit. Nothing new. And number one is... It's Cynthia. Yeah. Here she is again at number one. A design so good that nobody really wanted it to be redesigned. This design makes her look competent in every single aspect of existence, like she can master anything, but you know why she's here. This is a long video, so let's move on. Hisui gets its own section, but since most of the designs are iterations of previous characters, I thought it was fair to narrow the list down to five. Number five. Mai, way better than Marley. She looks so pretty and her outfit is more unique than any other Diamond Clan Warden. These patterns are gorgeous and the Zoroa hair clip is genius. I want to see this as a real person. Number 4. Kamado. You can't deny it, this man's got drip. That gold duck graphic is astonishingly spectacular. I never thought we'd get such detail in a Pokemon design. And it's not distracting. Rowan's face has always been striking and accompanied by that Giratina looking jacket, this man knows he's in charge. Number 3. Kogita. An older and wiser Cynthia in an exclusively black and white color scheme, wearing Victorian clothes. It's a perfect design. This and the next two characters have S tier looks. Number 2. Ingo. While obviously the story of Ingo is the main reason he's now everybody's favorite conductor, but you gotta admit, he looks 10 times cooler now too. The tattered uniform really adds to the mystery of his tale and emphasizes his tragic story. Before number one, I want to mention a ton of characters. Some spoilers ahead. Charm's hot. I'm not gonna lie, I, I love how her design merges a younger Bertha and Agatha. Benny's ninja outfit is pretty sick. A white ninja makes sense in the snow, and his hair and mask are tight. He went from a D to an A. Purely based on her design, I am five times more interested in Arezu than Mars. She is very attractive. One of the few characters whose concept art literally emphasizes her feminine hips. Paulina is beautiful, and the pearl diver goggles and outfit are is pretty smart. I think Sabi's design is underrated. And finally, Irida is a great character and her design is super interesting. It's simply not as successful as the number one character design in Hisui. Which is... Adaman. This is the most attractive male character in Pokemon. It's not too detailed like Irida's design, everything about him is super cool. I love the yellow crack that runs along his clothes and the diamond shaped rope and necklace. That hair is gorgeous. S plus tier design. Generation 5 is when Pokemon stepped up their character designs. It's now the modern era with multiple artists bringing their A game. Number 13 goes to... Getsis. A pretty complicated design that actually looks even better and more intimidating in game. These patterns are fascinating and the rampart collar is incredibly unique. His hidden arm, bell's palsy, and eye patch are so mysterious. The most interesting looking character in Pokemon. Number 12. Lenora. Technically the first black character you encounter in Pokemon, right? It's a shame that her original art resembles a mammy stereotype, but god, does she look a hundred times cooler with that apron over her shoulders. She's underratedly beautiful and super strong looking. The afro and wide pants give this design some balance. Her color scheme is unique and vibrant. A plus tier design. Number 11. Grimsley. Sure his older design is interesting too, but his original look is devilishly handsome. His suit is tailor made for a gambler, a great way to make this guy look suave without making him look too flashy, another character we would have liked to see more of. Number 10. Hilbert. I may be biased, but this is my favorite male player character design. He's one of the few to actually come close to a respectable reboot of Red's design with more practical, mature, and realistic clothes than Red, while still matching the trainer's aesthetic, this is the protagonist I want to look like the most. Number 9. Alder, such a majestic looking man. I love his hair's volume which alludes to his signature Pokemon, the fact that he carries his Pokeballs because he doesn't know how to use a PC is, is amazing visual storytelling and his warm colors are comforting, a great champion design. Number 8. Iris. Champion Iris is pretty but it's, it's a little overcomplicated. I think her younger version is just a very expressive yet realistic design. She's wearing such loose and athletic clothes. This is exactly what I remember the girls wearing in a Brooklyn playground as they swing from the jungle gyms. A perfect antithesis to Drayden's design. She's younger yet represents the past. Number 7. Hugh. This is one of my favorite rival designs. He looks edgy but friendly. Tough but kind. This is the best combination of all kinds of rival archetypes. Kinda like the perfect rival for an anime. His hair is as explosive as his temper and his jacket is pretty dope. I like his style. Number 6. Colrus. You may find his internet explorer hair humorous, but it makes him look interesting. It looks like a galaxy or atom. His shade of blue vigorously pops out against the black, which contrasts with his lab coat. He's also undoubtedly handsome. A very gentle design. Number 5. Elisa. Both designs are iconic. 
I prefer the black too design, but I don't have to go into detail why she looks good. Elise is a fashion model, looking good is part of the job, and the electronic elements fit really well. I'm a fan of the plus and minus red and blues too. Number 4. N. This design miraculously fits the role of rival, antagonist, and champion. I love how the void cube he carries indicates he's a mathematical genius, while the various other fidget devices may lend credence to the theory that he's neurodivergent. N's black and white color scheme is an obvious metaphor to his turmoil, accompanied by green, a neutral color, and his necklace reminds me of an atom which suggests a relation to the Tao Trio and their fusion theme. Number 3. Hilda my personal favorite protagonist design. This is what a brave and heroic female Pokemon trainer looks like in my mind. She doesn't have any unnecessary accessories or articles of clothing, and her ponytail is the best hairstyle for someone hiking through the wilderness. A lot of female Pokemon trainers look like beginners, while Hilda looks like a winner. Number 2. Roxy. I care about Hilda 10 times more than I ever think about Roxy, yet I can't help but place her higher. It's one of the few characters we all instantly noticed when she was introduced. I'm in love with that color scheme, and the white hair only helps. Not to mention that Scolipede base is killer. This was the first indication that Game Freak knows how to design great punk girls. Honorable mention time. There are many. Anthea and Concordia are so pretty. And sisters look like angels. Benga is pretty cool. Nate and Rosa could have been on the list, but while their designs are unique, fun, and appealing, they're also kinda goofy. That's not bad, but a lot of the designs here have a lot more depth. Rosa is one of my favorite protagonists though. I love her baseball tee and physique. The Shadow Triad looks pretty badass, and Zinzolin looks crazy. Caitlyn is a total upgrade, and Marshall has one of my favorite designs as well. Chantal was close to being on the list, on account of her cat collar. She's very cute. Clay's a whole stereotype, but I think his design is still tasteful and amazingly colored. Emmett is great, but Ingo does look cooler. Skyla's hot, we all know it, but it's not like this is the most successful interpretation of a flying type trainer. It's an odd design elevated by how attractive Skyla is. And finally, the Neo Team Plasma Grunts designs would have been around number 10 on my list if I was able to use non-named characters. They definitely contend for the title of best antagonist team design. And number 1 is... Drayden. This is the handsomest old man I've ever seen. I love Drayden. He looks amazing. Imagine looking like this. He's both intimidating and reassuring. It's like witnessing a biblically accurate angel. He's terrifying, but you're glad he's on your side. The dragon jaw mustache is imposing. This is an impressive design. A mayor who represents the old and new. Kalos is less impressive, but we still got some bangers. Number 10. Viola. She's in my opinion very underrated for multiple aspects. All of the various butterfly motifs in her design are genius, as well as her hair looking like the antennae and or proboscis of a butterfly. It's a cool way to elevate a mundane design, and she looks even better in a ponytail as shown in the anime and concept art. Number 9. Wolfric, another imposing yet tranquil looking 8th gym leader. His icicle mutton chops and beefy coat used as a cape were risky but paid off so well. A very successful design. Number 8. Serena, the most stylish female player character. People love to cosplay her because her outfit is realistic, fashionable, cute, and beautiful. A perfect representation of Kalos' theme. Number 7. Diantha, another character who would have been beloved if written well. She's a carbon copy of classic Hollywood and French actresses. She has a nostalgic yet futuristic look, almost like an angel. She's kind of like an anti-Cynthia, completely white with brunette hair. She's gorgeous. Number 6. Seabold. They designed a water type master who is also a famous chef, and they nailed it. This is the coolest looking chef in existence. It's crazy how good this concept works. Number 5. Lysander. Again, forget the writing, cause design wise, this is a good antagonist design. Unlike his grunts, Lysander's suit is pretty badass, and his hair not only vaguely represents a fleur de lis, but flares like a regal flame and mane. Number 4. Malva. I love the visual storytelling in this design. She's canonically beautiful, sure, and her glasses are pretty neat, but as a holocaster reporter, she's only seen from the waist up, so when you finally meet her and see her team flare pants, you know she's the best looking villain in Kalos. Number 3. Professor Sycamore. The best looking professor. What a handsome man! Do I have to say more? We can all agree they successfully made a handsome French professor. There is no flaw here. Number 2. Essentia. This is unexpected, considering she's only part of the postgame. A lot of you guys haven't met her, but I promise you that if she was part of the main plot, you would absolutely love her. This is such a good villain design. The digital mask with an E is genius. 
Honorable mentions include Bonnie, honestly well-designed child, very adorable. Alexa is as good looking as her sister but has less depth. Drasna is underrated. All the dragon teeth are radical and we barely have any female Pokemon characters her age. She's very appealing. Karina would have been number 11. She's a cool looking scaler and I love how her ponytail comes out of her helmet. Not the deepest design though. Olympia would have been high on the list if her hair wasn't this goofy. It does move around when she uses her powers, I'll give her that. Great design regardless. Undoubtedly attractive. Valerie is also a controversial design. Some find her beautiful, some find her creepy, but we can all agree it's a good design. And finally, Zerosek is actually really well designed. I wanted him to be on the list, but there wasn't much room. This is the best take on an evil scientist in the franchise. And number one is AZ. Probably the most unique design in the franchise. I love how he almost doesn't fit in with Pokemon. He's very detailed, but not complicated. It gives this uncanny feeling of a man from a completely different time. The long white hair denotes both age and majesty, and hints at how this eternal wanderer is both 3,000 years old and royalty. You can't help but feel bad for him. More effort into Alola's story means more effort into the designs. I wanted a top 10, but one of the honorable mentions needed an actual slot. So number 11 is... Kahili. It's so dumb how underrated her design is. She's barely in the game like most Elite Four, yet she gets flack for it. But her design is genius. The concept of a golfer with flying types is already clever, but all the wing and feather elements along with the Toucan and Golf Club makes this an A-tier design. She's very pretty too. Number 10. Kukui. A very simple yet 100% successful design. No flaws at all. Such a cool looking guy with a design that perfectly represents the character. Number 9. Plumeria. This fusion of island, ganguro, and punk is very well done and nicely complements her boss. She looks intimidating yet pretty. Her post-game Salazzle inspired design is great as well. Number 8. Professor Burnett. Kukui is overshadowed by his wife in the design department. She makes her mainline series debut in Sun and Moon with her Dream Radar suit tied around her waist and a headband that matches her goggles. Her new tan ties the design together and complements the white hair. She's a very pretty character. Perfect for Kukui. Number 7. Wick. I love her 60s inspired bouffant, alluding to her motherly nature. Her cape-like shawl is very stylish and I love the gold framed pockets she has. Her heels also add a bit of sass to this wholesome character. It's very rare we get a woman with this body shape in Pokemon. Number 6. Gladion. A bit on the nose with the edginess, but still successfully conveys the point of this character. All the tears caused by his training with Sylvalai are heartbreaking, and the dark look explicitly defies his mother's design sensibilities, which give this character so much depth. Number 5. Lusamine. I love how her hair wraps around her entire body like a sinister hug. The heels even make an impact in her battle, along with those memorable leggings. Her jewel is pretty, and I love the translucent frills on her dress. Overall, an undeniably attractive character. Number 4. Lily. While she definitely looks livelier in the outfit she picked for herself, her original design is a bit more interesting. The fact that her mother dressed up Lily like the Ultra Beast she was obsessed with is great storytelling. Her bag is iconic, and so is Lily's look. Number 3. Lana. This is such an underrated character design, with many details that come together. Her fishing net inspired hairband, the sailor inspired cape, the swimsuit under her shirt, and wave patterns on her pants all work. This is how you design a character. She looks serene and independent. Number 2. Olivia. She's straight up the hottest character in Pokemon. A flawless queen. Like this is the first design that isn't just an attractive anime character, this is literally a depiction of an insanely good looking woman. And she has jewelry because she's a rock type trainer, but it all works. I love the colors too. Here's some honorable mentions. Team Skullgrunts would have been on the list if they had names. This group along with the Neo Team Plasma are the best looking antagonists. The Ultra Recon Squad are interesting too. I love their sun parched blue skin and their suits are fascinating. Mallow and Kyawe look perfect, they're flawless, just less depth than Lana's design. Acerola could have been on this list. The ragdoll aesthetic basically emphasized how she's forgotten royalty. She's both cute and creepy. The Aether Foundation employees look pretty fresh, I gotta say. The girl employee is incredibly cute too. Your mom's pretty dope, honestly the best mother design in the franchise along with Serena's mom. And Mina's design has a lot of cool details, like how she wraps a spare shirt around her bag and the pastel colors really match this fairy type trainer. Her younger design from Let's Go is insanely adorable too. And number one is... Ya boy Guzma. This design perfectly exemplifies what Guzma is about. He's a kid who never grew up. The monochromatic patterns with hints of gold are an aesthetic I'm sure many of you would like to wear. I love the idea of asymmetrical shades and the fact that this tattoo is temporary is hilarious. It's a complex design with a very simple theme. And finally, Galar's biggest draw is his character designs, so this will be a treat. Number 10. Melanie. This is a flawless design. It's pretty amazing seeing representation of curvier women in the franchise and even more hot moms. 
I love how simple her uniform is compared to the rest. It feels like she's wearing the coziest sweater in existence, and her hair has been masterfully styled. Number 9. Leon. A tacky design that makes sense because Leon basically made this costume at a young age. He looks like a child's idea of a champion, this larger than life hero with brands on his cape. He's a handsome fellow, but I can never get over how genius it is to give him a crown pattern on the underside of his cap. Give the dude who thought of that a raise. Number 8. Gloria, one of the most popular protagonist designs, because she looks so cute and realistic. This is such an adorable getup. The magenta and green complements each other, and the plaid socks are snazzy as hell. I'm a big fan of her short bob. Her hair and cardigan are incredibly British, polite yet rowdy at the same time. Number 7. Kabu. The fact that we can all agree that this old Japanese man is hot is incredible. I love the fire patterns on his long sleeves, and reflective firefighter patterns too. It's such a genius design when you look at it from up close. Not to mention, he rocks those white hair streaks. Number 6. B. A top tier design and we're not even halfway through the list. I love how her fierce glare contrasts with her adorable bow. The karate gi pattern on her shirt is graphically stunning, and the fact that she ties up her shirt revealing her training unitard and rocking abs was such a great idea. Number 5. Raihan. The uniform of this gym inspired Lance's knight-like look, but Raihan represents the dragon itself. It was a fun idea to make him tower over every single character in the game. His well-designed dragon hoodie is the coolest thing ever, and only he can pull off that headband hat and reptilian hair. He believably looks like a guy who has tons of fictional and real-life fans. Number 4. Alistair. One of the best designs in Pokemon, a shy little boy with a mask of a Cursula, he looks spooky and charming. You just want to play along and boost his confidence. I've seen many women who swoon at the sign of Alistair. So Game Freak really did a good job of creating characters who would believably have giant followings like they do in the game. Number 3. Sonya. I will admit that Sonya may be my favorite character in the franchise. They finally gave us the design of a bubbly woman in her 20s. Her hairstyle is fun and her nails are done. The combination of green and orange is so appealing, and her trendy coat ties it all together. The heart-shaped pins and buttons are cute, and honestly, she looks perfect to me. Number 2. Nessa. This is simply one of the best video game character designs. Obviously she's canonically beautiful, but her turquoise highlights and eyes are objectively gorgeous, like waves, and the orange accents complements the blues so well. Her jewelry and fashion are elegant yet trendy, her shoes are tacky, but that's 100% the experimental type of clothes a model would wear. Ness is the perfect balance of beautiful, alluring, cute, intimidating, and stunning. Now here are some great honorable mentions before moving on. Chairman Rose is a dapper dude. His hair, suit, jewelry, shoes, beard, and rose knot tie are all respectable. Oleana is also a beautiful woman. The signature rose hexagonal earrings are a nice touch, and her choker looks good on her. Clara has the best gym uniform in the game, and her idol look is a clever contrast to her toxic personality. Pierce is a fan favorite for a reason. His getup is well designed, but his hair is a little bit too much for me. They did a great job with what they were going for though. And Morty is really well designed. I appreciate a hefty character that is canonically handsome and isn't played for laughs. His hair looks great, and his uniform is actually pretty cool. And number one is... Marnie. This slowly became my favorite design in Pokemon. The combination of black and pink really emphasizes the duality of Marnie. You expect her to be this brash punk girl, when in reality she's super sweet. The leather jacket over her cute dress is unironically an amazing fashion choice, and the hint of green in her eyes is what ties the color scheme together. Her pigtails are adorable while her bangs and boots are badass. This is one of the most balanced, appealing, and deep Pokemon character designs in my opinion. Kind of like how some of the best Pokemon designs have a mixture of fierce and adorable. This apparently applies to the human characters as well, and Marnie exemplifies this the best. If you enjoyed, please leave a like if you want to see more videos like this. I'm sure you'll like the video where I create Pokemon as well. Go to the description to see the t-shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by pressing the join button. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!